What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Tkinter tutorial video. Uh, in this video what we're going to be doing is talking about how we can start incorporating live pricing data into our application. So there are tons of ways that we could do this. We could do this with pure Python code, grab what is a JSON, but just treat it like a text, split it up and all this. Um, but managing the data sets is uh, it's going to be a little bit bigger of a deal, especially once we start uh, applying some information to it. So in, let's say, the, the tick data, for example, that we're going to pull, that's going to be live data. It's going to show every single buy and sell. Uh, and so to do that properly, we want to be able to, for one, differentiate between buy and sell. But then as time goes on, we're going to want, it might be a lot of data that we're pulling. So we might, I mean, we might say pull uh, three days worth of data, but then we want to have, like, say, the open, high, low, close candlesticks be... 30-minute uh, data instead of the, say, 5-minute data that we pull. Stuff like that. Um, so we're going to, down the road, want to really um, modify the data set a, a lot or a little, but we want to have the ability to. So the easiest way to do that is with a combination of, uh, of quite a few things. So the first thing I'd like us to go ahead and do is we'll come over to, uh, let's just go to, we'll just go to google.com for now. Um, and I'll bring this down. And let's see, the first thing uh, that I'd like us to go ahead and do is, actually in fact, here's what we'll do. We'll come over here first. And we're going to import URL lib, import JSON. And these two things are built into Python. You already have them. And then also we're going to import pandas as PD and then import numpy as NP. Uh, NumPy is for number crunching for the most part, uh, and then Pandas is for data uh, manipulation. Both of these things are not automatically included in Python. Uh, you can find out if you have it by opening up a quick GUI here, um, and then just try to do import Pandas, and then, wait a second, import NumPy, something like that. And if you can do that, then you already have the modules and you're good to go. If you don't already have the modules, uh, then you are going to want to get them and let me pull up all of the uh, these two things pandas and then finally I've got one more uh, location for this let's see so if you're on uh, let's say Mac or, um, or Linux you can't use this website but if you're on Windows this is the website I would suggest you use to get um, get these things so let's say you want numpy you just do control f search for numpy click on it and here's numpy these are all of the things so like for me I'm on a 64 bit 3.4 so this would be my oops not that one this would be my download if you're on a 32 bit 3.4 this would be your download um, and in fact hold on what's the difference oh actually I'm sorry this wouldn't be your download uh, this one this is the most recent version um, so you have those um, Otherwise, and then same thing with pandas. Okay, so we could type in pandas, and here's pandas right here. Download pandas, so we can use pandas. If you are on, like, say, Mac OS, or maybe on a Linux system, first of all, if you're on Linux, you just do app get or something, or pip install. But otherwise, numpy is on numpy.org, and then we have pandas, which is pandas.pydata.org, and then you would go to get pandas and all that. So. Depending on, on, on uh, you know, what operating system you're on, the actual downloading and installation process might vary. Um, so again, for Windows, I would just suggest you use this website. If you're not on Windows, um, use you know, these websites or pip install or whatever you happen to use to install modules. So uh, once we have those things, let's move that over here. Um, you've got pandas and numpy you are ready uh, to uh, get into this stuff. So first of all, let's save and run this and talk a little second about what we really want. So when we start up this application, what we want to do is the starting page is going to be a, a little bit of a warning page. So we've got a start page, and then eventually we'll have a sort of home page. But for now, uh, we're going to be doing most of our work with the BTCE exchange. So we're going to build all of the back end using that exchange as an example. And then we'll just kind of port everything over to the other exchanges uh, when we need to. And at that point, we might have a home page or a start page that uh, lets you pick between exchanges. Uh, but as long as we're always going to be launching into the BTCE exchange, we're not going to have a home page just yet. It doesn't really make much sense because every time we would test it, we have to click all these buttons. And so that's kind of annoying. So we're just going to leave that for now. But we're still going to have this warning page pop up. 
and then we'll just have them click agree and then uh, they'll be launched into BTCE, whereas normally they would launch into the home page. So the start page will just have a warning like, hey, this is a beta uh, program, use at your own um, discretion or risk or whatever. So that's what we wanna do. And so we're gonna do uh, make some changes basically. So first of all, uh, we'll come up, you know, this is our app, but we wanna go to start page, basically this page right here. And uh, these things here, see we only need two buttons. So I'm gonna delete button three. And then we're actually gonna call this button one and button one pack there. And um, and instead of visit page one, visit page two, we're gonna call this one agree. And this one will be uh, disagree. If they disagree, we don't need Lambda, we don't need anything really besides we'll just put quit. So if they hit disagree, it leaves the application. Um, otherwise, if they hit agree, we wanna show frame. And normally we would show frame, we don't have one yet, but we would sh if we had a home page, we would say, okay, we wanna show page homepage. Uh, but for now, we're going to have it send it to BTCE underscore page. That doesn't exist yet, but we're right about to make it. So that's what we want the start page. Now, the only other major thing I'd like us to do is we've got, you know, self text, large font start page. Instead of saying start page, we would want to say, um, um, let's, let's call this, we're going to call it alpha Bitcoin. Actually, let's capitalize Bitcoin, Bitcoin trading application. Um, and also if you want to do like multi-line text, this is how you can do it. You can do, um, see like if I do this, comment down here, uh, and do blah, 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 right? It's not connected, right? So the way that you can get around that is one, you can use new line or something like that. Um, but the superior method would be three quotes as if you were almost commenting it out, but you're not, um, alpha Bitcoin trading application. Um, and then we'll just kind of tab it up. Whoops. Oh no. What did happen there? <laughs> I thought I would get away with tabbing it over, but I guess I, I can't tab it that far. Um, let me try. Let me try one more thing uh, before I, I thought we would get away with this. Alpha Bitcoin trade. What? Seriously? Okay. Um, can't quite figure out why that's not being kind to me. But anyway, Alpha Bitcoin trading uh, application. Uh, use at your own risk. Um, there is no promise, promise, oh nice, now it's, now it's going, of warranty, um, and that's good enough for now. <laughs> Once this goes a little uh, longer, uh, we'll, we'll put in a, a proper uh, warning there. So, so now we have that, and now what we want to go ahead and do is uh, we've got the label. Let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Oh, well, this isn't gonna work yet. So um, we've got page one, page two. Uh, we, we're, I wouldn't mind leaving one of these just to just for reference later on, but we'll delete page two. And instead of page three, we're gonna call this BTCE page like that. Um, and that's our graph page, so that stays the same. Uh, so let's go ahead. Oh wait, we need to go up here. Um, so anytime you add pages, what you always have to come into the, the main class here and we come down and see we've got start page, page one, two, and three. Uh, we still have page one. I'm just going to leave that for reference. We're not actually going to use that page. So we've got start page and then we have uh, BTCE underscore page like that. And those are our pages. So now um, the other thing that I want to do, oh, so if they agree, they go to BTCE page back to home should go to start page and we no longer need a page two. So we'll delete that. Now let's go ahead and save and run that. See if we messed up anything. Uh, so our indentation is not the best. Um, yeah. And it's cause I added all these tabs. I'm pretty sure use it. Your <laughs> There's no problem. <laughs> Man, I had this working on, on uh, my other, my, my actual version. Anyway, let's click that real quick. Okay. So back to home, back to this page. Um, I guess we, we could use the new lines. This isn't very long. I just don't, I'm not quite confident as to why. Um, here's, what we'll, here's what I'll try to do. At least on my version, I do something more like this. So let's try this version. Save and run that. Um, yeah, that looks a, a little better. So, so that's good enough for now. And we hit agree and we go to the graph. So good enough. So back to home, good. That's aligned well enough. So we'll exit out of this. 
And now what we want to talk about is actually getting this data um, into our uh, our chart. So we want to have the connection to the actual BTCE server. So if you go to BT slash D BTCE dash, uh, actually I had one of my usernames in there. I'll get rid of that. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, BTCE.com um, and come down to the bottom here. Uh, let's just do that. And go all the way down, you get trade API, and there's also public API. Um, really what we're going to be using is the public API for now, and then we'll get into trade API. But for now, you just would use public API to actually acquire the pricing data. So these are where you would get, you know, pricing basically like this stuff or this. I'll show you exactly what we're going to be doing, but here's an also, here's like a ticker. So you can click on that, and this would be the current prices. But we're actually going to go for it is the trade history. Wow, my information still stays in there. Thank you, Google. Um, anyway, this account has like no money on it, so there. That's actually, this will be the account that we use uh, for this tutorial. So anyways, um, so this is uh, basically the, the, the API and all that. And so I think what we'll do is I'll cut off this video here and then we'll talk about in the next video how uh, we can connect to the API, pull that data, and because it's live data, right? So we can keep querying their API. So they also have a, a, a socket API as well. Not really going to get into that uh, yet. It would it would be really cool to incorporate that eventually into this this um, this client, just because the socket API is really cool. Um, but uh, for now, we're just going to use the typical you know static API where we just keep making requests. So uh, so that's what you guys have to look forward to uh, in the next video. So if you guys have any questions or comments up to this point, really we're just kind of orienting the code uh, to support uh, the changes that are coming. But if you do have any questions or comments at this point, please feel free to leave them below. Otherwise, as always, thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support and subscriptions. And until next time.